Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my video. Today we'll be doing the setup video for the Beast X build. This will be part three and there will be a link down below to part one and two where we actually built this quad. So first, before we get into the setup, make sure you have your FPV antenna on. You can see my little Triumph on and you have your props off. Um, this will keep your VTX from frying while you have your battery plugged in. And in case the motors do spin up, something goes wrong, it can't go anywhere. It won't be able to produce any thrust. Definitely take your props off. So first, let's get into the ESCs and jump over to the BL Heli configurator. All right, so here we are. So going to plug the quad in with a USB with your battery disconnected. Make sure the right COM port is selected. It usually auto selects. Hit connect and then plug in your battery here. You should only hear those tones. Come down here to read setup. And we're going to um, flash all here. And these, it should just auto detect AH70 there. And we're just going to go 16.6 .6 and we're just going to hit flash. And these are the DYS XSD 20 amp ESCs that I'm flashing here. And just real quick, if you see the min and max, uh, different values here, 1148, 1296, and 1000. I was just testing some things with D-Shot, which I'll explain a little bit later. So it just basically goes through the flashing. It's real simple. It takes about a minute for all four. All right, there we go, all done. And I would normally set these or just leave these in auto calibrate and beta flight, but I'm gonna leave these go to prove my point about D-Shot a little bit later. So I'm gonna turn off programming by TX. I'm gonna turn this up to 0 0.75, turn temperature protection off, leave that there, leave that there, leave that there. I turn the beep strength up to 50, so if it crashes in the grass, it's easier to find it. And I turn this to two minutes on the beacon delay, which basically means if the ESCs are powered on and they're not receiving any signal from the flight controller, say you're disarmed for two minutes, they will start to beep. That way you can find it. So it kind of acts like a built-in buzzer. So then we just go down here to right setup, and we should be good and ready to go now that it's done. So let's hop on over to beta flight. All right, here we are in beta flight. Um, but this board, this is the X-Racer F303 version three in there. And I've already flashed it, but I'll show you reflashing again. So I'm gonna unplug the board and the battery fully off. And on this board, it has a little boot button right here. Hopefully you can see that little button. And you have to press and hold that and plug it in right there. And you should only get a blue light on the board. That red is from the receiver. So now we can flash it. So you need the X-Racer SPI here. And then we're just going to choose 3.1.6, and these are the options that you need to select. You need no reboot, reboot sequence, full chip erase, and a manual baud rate of 256,000 there. So load the firmware online. And then we can hit flash, and it should just go through there. And this will take about 30 seconds. All right, there we go. Programming successful. So let's go back to welcome. I'll unplug the board, plug it back in so it's not in bootloader mode anymore. And we'll hit connect. We should be good to go there. And I'm going to leave the accelerometer first here. I'm going to turn the back towards the camera here. So you, just to make sure, looking at this model, if we tilt forward, everything is working correctly. All the directions are right, which is fine. But if you rotated your board, say, upside down or turned it 90 degrees, you'll have to input some offsets. But I just put it with the arrow facing forward, so I am good there. When setting this part up, make sure you do what you are um, three for serial RX and then hit save and reboot not UR2 on this X racer board and also in the configuration make sure you choose serial based receiver and S bus here or else it will not work configuration so basically um, it automatically selected one shot 125 and just to prove a point um, I will be running D shot 600 these ESC's and flight controllers support that but I'm gonna select multi shot here just real quick and we're gonna turn off VBAT because I don't have that hooked up. No GPS, no, th um, this is the Beast X there. I'm going to turn the accelerometer off and I'm going to run 8K, 8K because this board can do that. We'll look at our, um, we'll look at our CPU load down later once we save this. And I'm basically just going to turn air mode on all the time as a feature. I just use basically a bare bones setup. That's all I use. I don't set up any extra features. So save and reboot. There we go. Just make sure everything's saved. Our CPU load is at 17% AKAK, which is perfectly normal. Go to the fail safe tab. I always set these to four, which will give you a 0.4 second delay. And set it to drop. You do not want it to land, just have it drop. Save and reboot. Then we can move over to the PID tuning. 
So I'm gonna leave the PID stock, obviously I haven't tuned this yet, but for the rates, uh, this is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be my racing setup that I'm gonna try and use. So I'm not gonna use my normal rates. Um, I usually have for freestyle. So I'm gonna actually leave that uh, 110 and 70. I usually put these up to 80. I'm actually gonna put these down to 60. Just because I, I don't put that to 50. I don't really know. I'm going to have to figure out new rates for racing, but that's just what I'm going to leave for now, so I wouldn't really go on that. And I'll leave that, um, the D point set po the D set point weight and transition, I'll leave that for when I tune it. And I'll just leave the TPA and everything else stock. So before we get into receiver, we can go over to motors. And this is, since I have multi-shot selected, and you saw, I have to plug in the battery here, you saw that in the BL Heli configurator, I had a bunch of different values selected for the um, ESCs, so we'll be able to verify that here. So if I spool up, you can see only motor one is spinning, and that's because I, that's the only one that I set down to a thousand. And if we raise them up, now these two start because it's like 11:48, which we had just passed, and then motor two, which I sent high, just now starts. So that just verifies all the different. Um, uh, endpoints there, but if we go back to configuration and set this to D shot 600, and I'm going to lower this to 4% here. I'm not 100% sure, but I've heard people use 4 with good luck. And now we can go back down to motors, and this is just proving that D shot ignores all that calibration value and just does it all manually itself. So now if we spool up. You can see all spool up at the same time, and they all spool up at the very bottom end. So right there at 1,010, we are getting the very minimum RPM that we can get off of this guy. So as for that percent value, I'm not 100% sure if it's, since there's a 1,000, 2,000, so it's a 1,000 range. If 4% of that, you'll be looking at um, 1040 where it idles. I'm not exactly sure. So that would be the idle. I'm not sure. I'll have to read up more on that. But I would just leave it at 4.5 or 4 stock for now until I know more about it. So we can get into the receiver tab now. All right, so we're now in the receiver tab. So we can just turn on our radio here. And everything should bind up. There we go. I'm already bound to the receiver. We can see just make sure all controls are working the correct way. And I've set my endpoints to 1,000 and 2,000. And then we can use that little window there to uh, adjust our trim. So it looks like it's holding really rock solid there. Little yaw jitter, so I'm gonna put in, my gimbals are pretty old, I need to get new ones, but I'll put in a little bit of dead band and that pretty much sums it up there. So everything's good and then you can check your channel five switch, which will be aux one. So now we can go over to modes and basically you're just going to hit add range here on arm and drag this over because if you flip your switch, that's where I want it to arm. So it, this little tick mark needs to be within this range when I have the switch flip. So make sure um, that's good there. And that's all I add since air mode is already on all the time. So let's hit save there. All right, so that should be pretty much good with D-Shot. It's a really simple setup. So let's see if we can arm. Oh, obviously we need our battery here. All right, got the battery plugged in. So let's see if we can arm. There we go, that's all good. So now I'll turn my radio off. Yep, the fail safe works. Might have been a little bit too slow, but there we go. And let's see if we can rebind and connect. And there we go. So yeah, everything looks like it's working good. So that's the end of this video for part three. Once again, links to part one and two will be down in the description, as well as a link to all the parts for this where you can find them. Um, I'll also leave a link to my Patreon down below if you wish to help support the channel if you enjoy this type of content. Please subscribe if you aren't already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.